And it is 7 o'clock. Are we ready? Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. 7 o'clock, so I'm going to call the meeting to order. This is the uh, regular City Council meeting for Minatrista, June 17th. And I'd like for you to first join me in Pledge of Allegiance. So welcome everybody here this evening as well as watching on YouTube later on. Um, first I'll start with introductions. I'm Lisa Whalen, I'm the mayor. And to my left are council members Kathleen Refkin, Ann McGregor, and Peter Vickery. Claudia Lacey is um, participating in our annual golf, uh, police golf tournament, fundraiser golf tournament. So, and then um, on the end, we have our city engineer with WSB, Allison Fowski. And then we also have Ann Meyerhoff, who is taking notes, who is our city clerk. And then to my right, we have um, Brian Grimm, our finance director, David Abel, our community development director, Sarah Sansala is our city attorney with Ke uh, Kennedy and Graven. And then we have Patrick. Cummings. <laughs> okay, you're not here that often, so I got your first name right. <laughs> Sorry, I should have just said Sergeant Patrick or something like that. Anyway, welcome, Patrick. Thank you for being here. Um, with that, um, any additions or changes to the agenda? I don't think so. Is there a motion to approve the agenda as presented? So moved. Thank you, Ms. Refkin. Is there a second? Second. Ms. Um, <laughs> McGregor got that. So all those in favor signify with aye. 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 All those opposed, motion passes by vote. Next we move on to special presentations. We have uh, two lovely ladies here with us this evening. Uh, they're with the Harrison Bay um, Improvement Association, I believe. Uh, Harrison Bay Association. Okay, thank you. Thank you. 
I, yeah, I think it was very um, educational, number one, and it really also it um, provides our educate part of us. It we need to do an educational piece for stormwater and for uh, yeah. water quality, and that kind of fits that bill really well. Um, so I think we definitely will um, want to uh, participate again. It was a great program. So. so So uh, I am a uh, University of Minnesota Extension horticulture educator, so I spend my days speaking with the general public, uh, talking about great plant selection, sustainable, land sustainable landscape design, also talking about things like managing stormwater runoff. So how do you do that in a landscape? It's sometimes difficult to explain to somebody in depth about how to redesign your landscape in you know five minutes or less. but. Uh, things like uh, having rain barrels, doing some simple uh, changes to their landscape, all those sort of things are things that I participate in and offer to the uh, Harrison Bay Association and our fellow uh, folks around the area. So uh, helping with the public education outreach and then also working with people on those stormwater pollution uh, presentations and information. So next slide. We have a great website. A lot of it is University of Minnesota research-based information. This comes from our water quality folks, comes from our design people. Uh, I'm one of those people. Uh, we talk about things like choosing the right plants. A lot of native plants and native cultivars that can tolerate those wet heat, so to speak, and also tolerate the drought because the past three summers have been really, really dry. And you may be wondering, like, why are we worried about rain barrels at this point when we were way into the drought uh, the past few years. But the important thing is to talk about in bigger picture about how do we manage water, but also how do we plan for these fluctuations that we have in water from drought to flooding, which we're now under a flood watch today. We also talk about lawn care too. So lawns are a big part of landscapes. Not everybody wants a lawn, but a lot of people do. There's a lot of great benefits to lawns, but how do you manage those lawns in a good way that prevents water from flowing off those lawns into the landscape. And how much fertilizer do you actually need on lawns? What kinds of turf species should you use that require less fertilizer and also can tolerate less, uh, less water as well? So benefiting us in that respect too. Uh, also thinking about things like lakefront buffers, really important around the lakes area that we all uh, enjoy here. What kinds of plants should you use? How big should they be? We have information on that. Rain gardens, we install a rain garden at Apple Lane in Mound. You're welcome to come and take a look at it. I'm sure it's gotten tons of use in the past uh, week or so. And then again, talking about rain barrels and the benefits of that. So next slide. We want people to keep water on their property. We want them to either collect it in rain barrels, have a, a way that that, uh, you know, reduce the compaction of their soil so that water can percolate down into their aquifers below the ground. And so we want to talk about that too. We don't want people having a lot of water running off into our gutters and going then in carrying uh, nutrients from uh, plant materials into our lakes and streams. Next slide. Is that our last one? I think that's it. Yep. So I think I think the big thing here is we've created kind of these links to other resources that we're providing our association residents with. I do. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, and we've had some conversations with you in the past. And so I think what what we wanted what I want to do as being part of that citizens advisory council is to make sure that I understand what your needs are, understand how we can partner with you, and having Julie as a resource as being part of the U of M um, is phenomenal. And like to have a, little, a few more conversations about that. I'd 
Well, thank you. Um, tonight, we can't give you that answer. <laughs> I think no, we'd have no, to. <laughs> yes, thank but, you. Yeah, um, yeah. Nathan, you would like us to probably work with Jasper specifically yeah, on right. the rain barrels. Yes. How many you want to yeah. supplement and that yeah. kind of thing? Yes. He's, okay. um, I've already talked to him, so he, he's aware. So go ahead and contact him. The okay. council's on board, so this is great. Yeah, if we can think of some opportunities to for education or other um, information, um, we'll definitely um, be in touch or yeah, talk to you again. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. Okay. Anybody at Trista Day? Were you at Trista Day? I don't think so. Right, Sherry? Were you at? Okay. So that might be an opportunity next year to be at Trista Day. Have a. It um, was May nineteenth. It's us. Uh, the, usually the third Saturday or second yeah. Saturday, second third Saturday. third Saturday in May. Oh, yeah. So yeah. Okay. Well, um, check out our website um, at the beginning of the year, and it's usually like the third Saturday in May, and you could have a table with information and talk to people, which would be great. Okay. okay. Great. Thank you. Good idea. All right. Um, I don't think anybody signed up under persons to be heard. And so we'll move on to consent agenda items. Um, are there any that you wish to pull? Otherwise, they um, approve our work session meeting minutes from June 3rd, 2024. Approve our city council meeting minutes from June 3rd, 2024. A resolution to approve claims and approve the temporary liquor license for Northwest Tonka Lions. And then E is Woodland Cove Water Main Improvements Advertisement for Bids. Any questions? Hearing none, is there a motion to approve consent agenda items A through E? So moved. Thank you, Ms. Refkin. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Vickery. All those in favor signify with aye. 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 All those opposed, motion passes. We move on to our public hearings, which we have none this evening, so we'll move on to business items. Um, the, the first item is a conditional use permit for the 3330 Highland Road. It was not on our consent agenda. The reason it wasn't is because we had a split vote on that. So I'll let um, David kind of recap real quick, and then we'll take the vote. Sure, yeah. Thank you, Mayor and members of the council. As the mayor just mentioned, this was at your uh, first meeting in June for review and consideration. The council uh, heard public testament and count, uh, comments on the condi proposed conditional use perm permit for a farm winery at Highland Road. Um, there was a split vote. It was a 3-2 vote to direct staff to bring back a resolution that would approve um, that conditional use permit for a farm winery. Um, the resolution is attached in your packet with conditions as, as they were uh, discussed at that meeting uh, specific to alcohol on the site. Uh, and those types of changes have been made to the resolution that's part of your packet for your consideration this evening. Thank you, David. Any questions or comments? Okay, hearing none then, is there a motion to approve resolution number 53-24 for a conditional use permit at 3330 Highland Road? So moved. Thank you, Ms. McGregor, is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Vickery. All those in favor signify with aye. 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 All those opposed? Nay. Motion passes 3-1, Ms. Refkin, nay. So next we'll move on to the water treatment plant task order. And we have a grant. What is your last name again? I'm sorry. Meyer. M -E -Y -E -R. Meyer. Oh, Meyer. All right. So we have Grant Meyer here this evening um, standing in for um, Aaron Vollmer, who is um, away with his family on vacation, I guess. Hope he's, like you said, hope he's having a good time. So with that, um, again, welcome. Thank you for coming. And I'm going to hand it over to you. Thank you, Mayor, members of the council. I'm standing in for Aaron Ballmer tonight. I've spent, I guess, had the better part of 10 years working together with Aaron closely on water treatment infrastructure and appreciate all the work we've had the opportunity to do with Minatrista so far as we're preparing for the future of the water utility here and really appreciate the work so far. Looking forward to taking the next step together and in part, I guess, asking for authorization to proceed with design, but also want to make sure everybody's comfortable with where we're at. Um, 
what it looks like going forward and answer any questions the council has before we take these next steps forward. Thank you. Yeah, I'm sure we have questions. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure you, I, I will spare you a long presentation. I assume everyone Thank knows you. the technical details that yes. got us to where we are today. So yeah. I don't need to go back over all of that. But. So I'm, I'm going to start. Um, I'm just going to go down the line. Um, Peter, we'll start with you if you have questions or comments, and then we're going to go to Anne, and, and, and then we'll come back again, of course, if, if something triggers and you want to ask more questions. I think just a very general overview would be Okay. Buried in maybe reading it enough here, so okay. maybe if you could just kind of give us a high level uh, summary. High level of the fees itself, or kind of the project? The project itself. Sure. Well, the project will be a new water treatment facility for the city of Manchester in the southern area, 2,100 gallons a minute, so about 3 million gallons a day. Additional treatment capacity. It will include two of the new wells, which I believe are currently under construction. As the city also looks to decommission or take a couple of the existing wells out of service, I understand wells that traditionally result in um, maybe some customer complaints as a result in staining for high levels of iron and manganese in those wells. So, transition to some new wells, increase the treatment capacity aligning more with the city's goals or comprehensive planning for 2040 as we look up to the future and provide adequate expansion for the growing community as well as treating the water quality to within primary and secondary treatment standards addressing some of those primarily iron and manganese concerns. So 2100 gallon a day treatment capacity for a new treatment facility in the southern area of the city that will treat the two new wells and complement the city's existing water treatment infrastructure in that area. Thank you. Okay. And questions? No. Sounds like a good project. I, I think it will be a fantastic project for the city, yes. How do we move up the goal of completing the design by March? <laughs> Faster? Yeah. <laughs> we can, I can certainly work with the project team on how quickly we can do that. Um, moving things forward, I, I would be a strong, to the extent that we can accomplish it responsibly and get through good decision making with the city and our team, certainly the earlier we can bid in the year would be better for a lot of reasons, mm -hmm. not the least of which I think everybody kind of likes to be on the front end of contractors and yes. filling up their schedule. <laughs> That's so our goal. <laughs> being, being aggressive as we can is certainly understandable. I don't have a solid answer for you right now, but I think that I'll certainly work with Eric and the team on if there's opportunities to move that along. So I think when we first started out, we were under the impression that it would be about a six-month design process. So I was somewhat, and I think that's what Ms. Refkin is uh, re referencing, is when we saw a nine-month design process, um, end of March, we know from a lot of our um, um, construction that we've done here, that's not a great bidding climate. And we are very, very, very concerned about the bottom line on this project. Um, the bottom number and the further out we go especially you get into end of March if that's the end design you're not even bidding it until April sometime so that's not a good bidding climate as you just stated we know that so we really need to move this up um, really need to move this up <laughs> so um, and then the other thing is uh, I, I did ask Jasper about this we discussed this a little bit about the the dollar amount and it's not to exceed I understand except that there's um, I think Ms. Refkin pointed out earlier that um, in a conversation that it did not include um, additional footings foundation if depending on the soils so can you maybe explain a little bit about that? I think she had some questions on that. Yeah. My, my understanding from the site as it exists today is we really need to get the geotechnical work done to right. have a real understanding of what, that, what the foundation is. And even when we look at the estimated depending on construction cost at this point and relative to some of the contingency, understanding what that foundation system looked like could be a big driver of construction costs for us there. But it would also drive engineering costs, or not? Would it or not? Would it add more engineering costs? Let me ask you that way. <laughs> I know. 
Yeah. I'm assuming. I mean, you know what we have? We could do. We could do a lot. I did. Depending if that geotechnical came back, that was, right. was something very crazy. We may have another discussion. Right. We can do a lot with what's in there now. Okay. So and if we if, would come back to yeah. you and be 100% candid if the if the geotech was if there was something incredibly unusual and they bring us back here to have another discussion about that. Okay. I don't think that we're going to find anything so un, well, I don't think we're going to find so unusual that it's a big engineering difference. It might be more structural. The construction, the okay. construction cost, if we get into different types of deep foundation systems, could could drive different discussions as far as construction costs. And the and geotechnical yeah. stuff, oh, that is, again, an extra cost to us, correct? That, yeah, that's yeah. not separate. Is it brown? Who do, you, who do we usually use? Like brown, 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 okay. Madam is that Mayor, who? Allison. If I'm I may. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I just so my apologies. Um, so A2S did reach out to WSB to bring forward, um, requesting to bring forward a proposal for geotechnical and surveying services for that site. Um, and there was just a, a miscommunication on the timing of A2S's proposal versus ours okay. for the geotechnical. So we anticipate um, I'll be bringing that forward um, uh, through either Gary or Jasper to make sure A2S is, con is comfortable with what we're proposing and then bring that to council for consideration at the next meeting. Okay, how long so, does that, yeah. How long does that take, the geotechnical survey? Um, the geotechnical, I, I'd have to take a look back, but we would have it, we, we anticipated having it back within six weeks of, of authorization. Because that's kind of a problem because... Yes, we can't start designing it if <laughs> yeah. we don't have that. So that, I mean, that's delaying it at least. See, because we don't have another meeting mm -hmm. for another four weeks. Right. And then if it takes six weeks to do that, now we're talking two and a half months from now before... Can, are you starting to design it prior to that? We will absolutely start other aspects of design yeah. as well. Okay. Yeah. We wouldn't want to get too far ahead of ourselves with respect to structural things or right. have to rework or unwind mm -hmm. things, mm -hmm. but the structural part is just one aspect to design, and we would absolutely be greenlighting, especially with the right. sense of urgency around the fit dates, we yeah. would absolutely be greenlighting as much as we possibly could. Um, so. Let me ask you something, um, Allison. Um, is there any chance of bumping that proposal up and maybe a special meeting, maybe with yeah. two or three of us or I something? Could, I could certainly talk to, to staff about that um, okay. and see if that's something. I just, I, I'm getting, I, I'm, I, I need to get it um, finalized to send to Gary, or if, assuming it be this week, it would be Jasper since Gary's out. Um, to make sure that um, that would be something that they can coordinate with A2S because we want to make sure that the proposal is hitting all the marks with A2S. No, I, I get that. Yeah. Maybe well, what you could do well, is... Ballpark, how much do you think um, it would cost? I, mm, I believe it was over 100000 For the geotech? For the geotech? For geo well, let me just... No, that doesn't sound right. I have no idea. Because <laughs> I know that there's certain amounts that you can... Yeah. That you can um, authorize. That, that sounds too much. Um, I know it's a large project. I know it's a large project, yeah. but yeah, <laughs> I think that's a bit high. Yeah. So let's do this. Allison, if you can mm -hmm. connect with Jasper this week, and like I said, if there's two or three uh, council members, we could get together briefly to authorize that prior to the 15th because, yeah, don't again, don't we don't want to wait no. that long. Okay. To, so even if you know, the 8th or 9th of July were to work or sooner. Yeah, well, if anybody can get the paperwork, we can meet before yeah. the end of the month. Right. Then. Okay. okay. I mean, and then, um, because I might have all, mm -hmm. yeah. Because I would be around by the end of the month. Okay. I mean, if we could meet that last week. Certainly. Okay. I'll, I'll work with staff. Okay. All right. So then you can work. Faster. <laughs> and that did give me just a moment to confirm yeah. uh, the, the comment in the, the task order agreement as well. It, 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 it was clear about the deep pot, deep foundations. So right. if we got into a situation yeah. where we were right. doing a deep pile structure, I think that's a different conversation we, we want to have comprehensively, not only the engineering part of that, but also the cons impact on construction cost as well, as that would be right. that's a significant understanding. Mm -hmm. That's why we are very interested yes. in getting that done sooner than later and um, and also knowing some of those costs, pot potential costs. So, 
All right. And then, um, so timing was in those those uh, deep foundation things. And then, oh, all right. I think we need to have a little conversation on budget. So I don't know if you know this or not, but we have about 2,200 water accounts. 97% of them are residential. And we're only growing by about 100 and 100, 120 new homes a year. So it's not like a, a huge um, new new homes that are going to be paying for this. And so we need to be very, very careful on every dollar and penny that we spend on this. So we want to make sure that you understand that we can't go Cadillac. We have to go VW. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> so um, I don't know what where that puts us, but I think we probably want to be somewhere in the 15, 14, 15 million dollar range or less. Um, if there's special things, um, eliminate all the bells and whistles for now and we'll see where, and then we'll talk about those maybe as we move along, but um, we really need to keep it very utilitarian. And then another question, um, steel or concrete tanks? What's your opinion and what's the cost difference and, and what are the, some of the advantages and disadvantages? Right now, I think steel is aiming heavily toward concrete okay. filters, and any number of drivers, but given what you just suggested, I think the price, as I understand it, the estimate is about $4 million less expensive to go with Con concrete. Concrete, concrete. okay. As well, opposed to the steel buses. I think we have concrete in our current ones. Is that correct? No. No, we have I mean, steel? There's steel. Okay, steel. okay. Steel. Yeah. Yeah. Which would have been one of the benefits is perhaps familiarity. Yeah. Um, but, but they operate similar. I mean, it's, it's, I think it's life expectancy or whatever, isn't it? And maintenance, maybe? Yes. Yeah. yeah I mm -hmm. been con for all practical purposes, concrete lasts yeah. quite a long time. And from an operational standpoint, it isn't, it isn't wildly different. The operation is yeah. very similar. Okay. Um, those are the questions I had. Um, timeline. And then, okay, one more question. Um, 2,100 gallons per minute. So do we even have the storage capacity to, to handle another 3 million gallons a day? <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it, it's a balance of water production and storage. And use. It, yeah. it, it is where, so long as it ultimately fits within the city's budget expectations, I think that's 2,100 gallons a minute is where you want to be, and I think probably the last thing that you would want to compromise as you look at construction of a treatment facility is the size. I think it'll put you in a better, I think it'll put you in a much better place as you look toward the future and look to grow. There's other things that we may be able to do to manage some of the costs associated okay. with it and trim here and there. I think as you look toward, as you look up toward the future, it's going to be much more costly to add those gallons yeah. and the treatment capacity in the future than if we can get that. Okay. A, even if it needs to be a little utilitarian right now, even if we can get it in the in that framework, that might okay. be the, about the last place I would recommend cutting is in capacity. Um, I was only asking because I think at one time it said twenty seven hundred somewhere I read, and so now it's twenty one. So that's good. <laughs> that's good. Um, I just wanted to make sure that we don't have so much that it's it's a storage capacity. If we if we're doing if we're filtering or have the capacity to filter twenty one hundred additional gallons per minute, but we don't have the capacity to store it, then we're kind of up against a wall again, and now we have to build more storage. <laughs> so. Well, it also allows us, if something happens with the current treatment plant, right. to right. take that offline and still have the treatment capacity right. for two Absolutely. cameras from that they already have. From a right. maintenance, so maintenance standpoint, right. or a catastrophic failure standpoint, right. if you lost the existing treatment facility, or going back and forth. So from a flexibility and operation standpoint, it does afford you right. a lot of resiliency in that yeah. All right. That's it. Can I maybe ask one yeah, question? Yeah, sure. Maybe just to give context. So I know me and Jasper even talked about this briefly, but because I know what it, the nine-month timeline on the design. So how many hours, just out of curiosity, go into like preliminary design and final? And I'm obviously a math guy or numbers guy, so I, I see just the dollar amounts, the 370 and the 667,000. So and maybe that'll even help the council. I mean, is that... 3,000 hours for preliminary design and 6,000 for final design or I don't are, is there what's a average or what's a standard amount of time and engineering time that needs to go into designing a 
water treatment plant, I guess, for those phases. Sure, but I'm not exactly sure what, if we assume this was standard, I'm not exactly yeah. sure standard, some of the things would be higher and lower. For, for this one specifically, 82S has, let, let's say we have about 75% of the project, so this is not included. This is not including the architectural and mechanical work and the numbers I'm about to give you, but there's just under 4,800 hours, or just under 4,800 hours total in the project. Roughly a third of that, maybe a little over a third, 35, 38% roughly, is in the upfront optimization, drug testing, and the preliminary design. It takes us to, right, between 35 and 40% of the budget, roughly. And then with the other roughly 3,000 hours being the line share from 2,800 of that is final design, and then about 200 hours for the bidding phase and services and getting through that part of the process. Okay. Jasper just texted. He thought the geo tech should be around less than 10 grand. Yeah, I was Even thinking so like 10, 10 to 15 is what I was thinking. Not but so then we wouldn't need a special meeting because then he could. He could it. authorize it. Mm -hmm. I think he's. So up to 10. 10 ish, right? No, I don't know. Ten. So, <laughs> no, 10 is the, the policy. Yeah, I, see, I think it is. <laughs> Sorry, so then, that, right? okay, <laughs> so that's, thanks. Um, so here's a question. Um, Council, would you like to authorize tonight Jasper to um, award a contract um, up to 15000 for the geotechnical uh, um, work yes. that WSB is going to have to do? And they're going to coordinate and all that. Yes. 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 Okay. <laughs> Um, do you, Sarah, do we need a motion to yes. that effect? Thank you. So is there a motion to authorize our city administrator, Jasper Krugel, to go ahead and execute a contract um, up to, to $15,000 for the geothermal, or geotechnical, I'm sorry, um, evalu evaluation is so survey? Moved. So moved. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. So, thank you, Mr. Vickery. So Kathleen made that and Peter seconded that. Any further discussion or questions? And Sarah, is that motion adequate? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Um, all those in favor signify with aye. 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 All those opposed, motion passes 5-0. Hopefully that will help you move things along faster. <laughs> all right, thank you. I, I do know, and one of the, besides the, the dollar amount, we, we are under pressure, if you will, um, to get more water, and um, I know Gary sweats it out <laughs> a lot of times, so um, we don't want to give him a heart attack, so we want to move this along as fast as possible. It, it will be, yeah. Yeah, and the, um, the compensation, um, again, I, I spoke with Jasper on this, and we compared it to um, SEH that did our other two water treatment plants, and percentage-wise, it's actually a little bit lower. So we're, we're right in percentage-wise um, of the total uh, project cost. We're, we're right there. So I think it's right around 8 9%, if I'm not mistaken, somewhere around there. So, so we're, I think we're pretty good there. Um, and I know you guys will do an excellent job and work closely with Gary and, and staff on, on, on all of the um, details. So anything else? Otherwise, um, I do... Um, need a motion to approve the scope and authorize plans and specifications for the water treatment plant, which is task order number 11 for AE2S. So moved. Thank you, Ms. Refkin. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Ms. McGregor. Any further questions? Hearing none, all those in favor signify with aye. 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 Mo motion passes 5-0. We didn't grill you too hard, did we? <laughs> no, no, no. Thank you so much. I look forward to working together. Thank you. There, there you go. <laughs> and we'll tell him he, you told us to do that. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks for coming. Thank you for coming. Yeah. All right. Uh, then we'll move on to administrative items. Are there any staff reports? I do need a liaison for our the 24th meeting in June here for uh, for planning. Yeah. Okay. I cannot be there. I can be there. You can be there. Okay. Um, Claudia will be. Is the council okay with that? Sure. Okay, we're approving Claudia for the Planning Commission. Any other staff reports? Okay, um, so a couple things real quick. Um, we had to pa uh, 
we had to cancel the bus tour because of inclement weather. And it wasn't as bad as they said it was going to be, but they were talking possible hail and, and you know, just all kinds of stuff. And so um, between all of us, staff and myself, we decided for everybody's safety and convenience, who wants to get out and, you know, in the pouring rain, we decided to cancel it. We haven't rescheduled a date yet. We're talking about a rescheduling a date um, probably in August or somewhere in that range. So we'll keep you posted on that. Uh, Kathleen and I, I think, mm -hmm. will be attending the uh, fire district meeting tomorrow morning at 7, 7 a.m. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> As you all know, this is not my favorite time of day. <laughs> and um, so we will be um, reporting back on that with you. And then also, Claudia, you weren't here, but um, in the work session we gave a report on the uh, meeting that we had with uh, regarding CMAR. We'll talk to you about that later. And um, let's see, what else was there? I think that was the main the main thing. So um, I'll also, just so you know, uh, the uh, League of Minnesota Cities annual conference is the end of the month, and I am signed up to go. If anybody else wants to go, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> All right, with that, um, any other reports? Um, Ann and I are attending a personnel committee meeting tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, I attended a Zoom call on the Kingsley Ravine design, and that's just about complete. So oh, nice. Okay, good. And that's in the Pioneer Sarah Creek watershed. Yep. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. I have something to report on the Gillespie Center, but first I will say that the city represented well in the crime prevention golf tournament today. We came in third. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, the Gillespie Center approved uh, funds to repaint the building. We picked kind of a nautical blue with white trim. It's going to look totally different. And we have uh, 12 different logos for um, a group of us to kind of look at. They're really amazing. So it's going to have a really new look by the end of maybe even June. Oh, wow. Great. That's great. Congratulations. I can great. kind of show you what the painting looks like. Very We've good. also got a, a sketch by an artist of what it's going to look like. So cool. that's really all I have to report. You played golf today in the rain? In the pouring rain for five and a half hours. <laughs> I love Jasper told you all that that is why I was tardy. We were in the money, so we had to stay for a while. <laughs> well, thank you for doing that um, for a good cause. Yeah, all good right. Cause. Um, with that, then, our business concludes, and we can go home with a motion to adjourn. So moved. Thank you, Ms. Refkin. And Mr. Vickery seconded that. Uh, all those in favor signify with aye. 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 All those opposed, motion passes by vote. And we'll see you on the 15th yes. next meeting, July. And I'll see you tomorrow. And I'll see you tomorrow. I'll yeah, see you tomorrow. it's 7 <laughs>